can see it's curling off to the right. Yeah. And it's also driving very left. Very right. Like. This is the first part of the track that's done. I've printed off 10 pieces of track. It took three and a half hours to print. That's how big it is compared to my hand, but it has to print them all. So far, it actually does work. I can roll the rollers and the geared one to power it does work as well. I had to design, I, what I did is I designed the tracks first, then I designed the wheel around the tracks and then it worked, so. Yeah, you got the actual tank is getting complete that's the hull I haven't got all the suspension arms on yet but this wheel will go here so that will go like about there it's going to be in four pieces there's a little bit of warpage between the parts but I'm printing the part is actually bigger than the print bed it's 20 centimeters whereas the print bed is 19 so I had to put it at a 45 degree angle so it just fits but bits of it actually go off the edge of the print area so you can see bits that don't quite do it, but I'll put in filler. So that is the suspension so far. I've got it on a Christie style-ish suspension, where each arm is got its own suspension piece, but it's actually connected to the U-joint, so you can see what I mean. I'm, I've not actually, I've got not got any wheels on it, but you can see how that will work, if that makes sense. But I haven't got all the wheels yet and it's not loaded so the only con I can see of this suspension so far is if there's no actual weight instead of the arms being at an angle they are so they actually like collapse they actually go vertical if that makes sense so now I have to like actually load them all on but once it's on the ground itself it should be fine once it's got all the weight of the batteries uh, I've been trying to get this track and sprocket to work. It's been an absolute nightmare. The problem was that if you look at this, first of all, it's the same width as the track holes, which didn't help because any play would mean that it wouldn't go in. Second of all, it's too high. If you look at the height of the teeth, it's too high. So I printed off a thinner pair by, well, not by accident, I did it because I thought it might not work, so I printed a thinner pair, and that didn't work. I decided I was going to cut the actual teeth in half to get them to be a smaller shape and to be more flat to see if it would work, and this is what I've got so far. This is all working off of this motor, which is on a worm gear drive that goes onto a thing. So I've had to redesign my track slightly. Originally it was going to have uh, bolts that go through but the tracks bent because of the print bed not being level and I couldn't do that. So I used one millimeter wire that goes all the way through. The problem with that is when the tank goes to turn you can see it is very very bendy which causes the tracks to not align up with the actual gear and it comes off. So I've now 3D printed loads of these tiny pieces straight hopefully. I was going to reprint the tracks but I don't have enough filament and to print a hundred of these little pieces takes three hours whereas to print ten of these pieces takes three hours. So I decided to go with this and see what would happen. But it's a lot more rigid than the other one. As you can see there's very little flex in this one. Whereas if I do that with this one, you can see how flexible this one is. I'm going to try and record this and drive the tank at the same time. So, 
it's not technically complete as you can see there are bits that are there but they're not actually here so the, the tracks flex a lot but hopefully it should go reasonably okay